Welcome, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal. I'm Mike Crowley, and I'm joined by Lisa Gibellario of the Wayside Youth and Family Support Network. Lisa is also coordinator of the Belmont Wellness Coalition. So welcome, Lisa. Thank you, Mike. All right. So, Lisa, today we're talking about fire prevention and fire alarms sound like a good place to start. What do we need to know? Well, it's a great place to start. And the advice is that fire alarms should be in our homes on every level um, of the home. So that's one thing. They need to be tested fairly frequently. Um, and that's as easy as pressing test. There's usually a button right on the fire alarm. Uh, also the batteries, Mike, they need to be changed twice a year. And the rule of thumb is to change them when we turn the clocks ahead or back. So okay. every November, every March. Um, and then to consider really overhauling your alarms about every 10 years and just starting with brand new ones. All right, so Lisa, let me ask, um, what else is important to do? Well, if we, for, for families with kids, right, we need to be really careful about keeping matches and lighters away from little hands. Kids need to be familiar with the sound of the smoke alarm, and they need to know what to do if they hear it going off. And so one piece of advice is for parents to develop and practice with their kids an escape plan. So let's talk a little bit more about escape plans. What might an escape plan look like, Lisa? So two routes out of the house is a place to start. So there should be hopefully a front door and a back door and review that with your kids. It's also important to have those exits out of the house free and clear. So they shouldn't be blocked with boxes of stuff or you know furniture. Um, teach kids to go low. Smoke can dense smoke can be incredibly incapacitating, but it is less dense closer to the ground. So that will help them to get out quickly. And then once outside, somebody needs to be responsible for calling 911 and staying outside. Well, that's all helpful information, Lisa. Is there anything else? Yeah, Mike, I think we should just briefly touch base on the holiday season kind of uh, advice that's dispensed this time of year. We're getting closer. So for those who celebrate with a Christmas tree, uh, you know, be mindful of where it is placed. It should be away from sources of heat, away from a fireplace. Um, of course, if you are someone who loves to light candles, just be aware um, of a room that a candle's in. Do not leave it unattended. Oh, of course, same with fireplaces. We should not be leaving fi lit fires unattended. Um, space heaters, this is important. If you have a space heater, it can never be plugged into an, um, an extension cord outlet or a, one of those track cords. It needs to go directly into the wall. And of course, make sure it's off when you're going to sleep or leaving the room for long periods of time. Um, kitchen fires, Mike, among the more common fires that um, are seen in homes. So be aware of what's near the stove. Be, be mindful of, you know, what's on the stove, of, of pot holders, things like that. Um, and of course, if anything does happen with regard to catching fire, the old adage, stop, drop, and roll applies. So get, get down immediately, down low, roll, try to roll that fire out. And that will at least be, you know, helpful in hopefully preventing devastation. All right. Well, thank you so, so much, Lisa. By practicing fire prevention, we can keep ourselves and our families safe. We'll see you next time.